In my search for a perfect adventuring machine, I've gone and bought two Subarus. One's a 2000 Outback wagon, and the other is a 2002 Impreza WRX wagon. So which one's best? Now, this is a bit of an unfair comparison. After all, I've bought two very dissimilar cars. Sure, they both look like ordinary station wagons, they both have all-wheel drive, they both have cloth interiors, and they both have Subaru badges on them. But inside the engine bay is where the astonishing differences begin. You see, this Outback has a 2.5 liter Rock'em Sock'em Robots dual raging under hood that's only good for about 160 horsepower, and the WRX has a turbocharger. So clearly we can't compare the two in terms of performance, but what about practicality? Back seat legroom in the legacy based wagon is pretty good, and that's with the front seats adjusted to be comfortable for me to sit in. In the Impreza wagon, back seat legroom is tight, but also a bit deceptive. Sure my knees look a bit squished, but there's a clever bit of elastic wiggle room on the back of the seat that hides precious extra inches of space for the long legged. Now would I want to get stuck back here on a long road trip? God no. But there are certainly worse back seats out there. One of the things I use my Outback for more than anything else is car camping. In fact, before I bought this thing, I actually asked the previous owner if it was okay for me to fold the seats flat and lay down in it. Needless to say, it works, and it even sleeps too quite comfortably as I've learned on my many, many adventures with it. My biggest worry about the Impreza was that its smaller size would spell the end of my car camping days, but not so much. Yes, there is less room to play with, but since you don't have to fold up the bottom of the back row to lay the seats flat, there is the option of laying the front seats down, which greatly extends the usable lounging room. In fact, I reckon this could sleep too almost as comfortably as the larger legacy based wagon. This board is about 62 inches long and it fits easily into the Legacy Outback. The hatch opening is very conducive to the ingress and egress of objects big and small. It loads like a small truck bed and the heavier duty cargo mat and more rugged interior materials inspire much confidence when filling this thing to the brim. That same 62 inch board just fits into the Impreza wagon, barely missing the front seats which are adjusted for 6 foot me to sit in. The back hatch opening isn't nearly as willing to accept larger objects, but once the thing's in, it's in. The flimsier cargo mat and daintier seat fabrics demand that you take extra care when sliding things in, lest you mar an otherwise flawless interior. One of the biggest differences between the Legacy and Impreza wagons is the overall interior quality. Now, both of these cars have seen some miles, and that the interiors have held up so well is absolutely a testament to how well they're made. However, the Outback's interior feels substantially more rugged, and feels like it's far more able to endure the beatings associated with camping and other outdoor excursions. On the other hand, the Impreza's interior is a lot more comfortable, and it's a much nicer place to be, but the seats feel considerably more delicate and would probably start to show wear far sooner than the Outback seats would. I'd want to be a bit more careful crawling in and out of the Impreza than I would in the Outback for fear of damaging anything. Subaru aren't known for having great cup holders, and their early 2000s offerings are no exceptions. Both the Legacy and the Impreza feature some of the most ridiculous pop-out center console cup holders I've ever seen. Believe me when I say that neither of these is suitable for 4am tofu delivery runs down the mountain passes. In fact, the only thing worse than the cup holder in my Outback is indeed the one in my WRX. Absolutely disgusting. Nothing goes in here. Ever. I really like being able to see out of my cars. I can't stand driving a lot of newer models because there's just no visibility in any direction. However, the good old Outback wagon has incredible visibility for a machine this size and more importantly, some of the best wing mirrors I've ever used. Seriously, this car is the masterclass in how to do rear and sidewards visibility, even if it is a slow and uninspiring thing to drive. If the Outback is the masterclass, then the Impreza is the introductory course. The smaller WRX wagon is still very easy to see out of in spite of having less glass, but the wing mirrors are blind spot 101. 
In fact, I've had to add these $1 stick-on bubble mirrors to both of them just so I can use them properly. So, not as good, but still better than just about anything that you can buy in 2016. In conclusion, with regards to practicality, both the Legacy Outback and the Impreza Wagon are incredibly capable machines that are bound to take you on countless adventures. The Legacy Outback definitely feels like it was designed with road tripping in mind, while the Impreza WRX is more of an all-round package that can be a good daily driver, an able road tripper, and a great performer all at the same time. Now, if someone would just loan me an Outback XT or a turbocharged Legacy GT, we might have a proper battle on our hands, but if I had to choose between the two that I have, I'd have to go with the WRX. The best time to buy a WRX is right ass now.